Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I actually treated the Vachetta leather on my brand new Nice Mini that I got for Christmas. If you do like luxury videos, which also includes luxury tips and tricks when it comes to leather care, then please hit that subscribe button below if you aren't already subscribed, of course. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video, which is generally at least once a week. Now, this was my Christmas present. I did unbox this early so I could go ahead and film for you how I treat the Vachetta leather on a brand new, that's the key word here, brand new Louis Vuitton bag. If your Louis Vuitton bag is vintage, even if it's a, you know, maybe five years old, I would still perhaps... I would be a bit cautious about using this technique because oils could have gotten into the leather and when oils get into the leather you could potentially have a counter effect where you use a spray like this. This is the Carbon Pro by uh, Colonial. Colonial. It's a, German, it's a German brand that does products for leather care, leather shoe care. So this is the Carbon Pro. I highly recommend this if you're based in Australia or if you don't have access to Amazon and can't get Apple Guard. Apple Guard and Carbon Pro do the exact same thing. They are both, both for water repellent, stain repellent, dirt repellent. They do help to protect the Vachetta leather. But the reason that I say is that when your Vachetta does get older, oils can get into the leather from your hands if it hasn't already been treated or if you haven't up kept the treatment and there is obviously some element of water inside the spray and water and oil do not mix so when when the vachetta does get older and if it hasn't been treated from the get-go it is it can be slight slightly risky to go ahead and spray apple guard to spray carbon pro because what will happen is that the actual spray will clash with the oil that's already in the fachetta leather and that's when you can actually get like a staining effect i'm going to include a picture of um what i found on one of our luxury facebook groups of someone that used i think it was apple guard or no sorry it was carbon pro but it could happen with apple guard as well it does happen with apple guard too they used apple guard or sorry carbon pro to spray the fachetta leather and the fachetta leather was on a bag that was pre-owned it was at least five years old and clearly oil had gotten into it some kind of stains had gotten into it and it clashed the water element clashed with the oil that was in the fachetta so there is another video that i have on my channel and it is actually me treating and um conditioning, treating, cleaning, a vintage Montserrat backpack. So I would prefer to use that technique on a bag that has any kind of signs of um, water spots, oil spots, anything like that, anything where the patina has started to really come through in the fachetta. I would feel much more comfortable to go ahead and use that treatment instead, the, the one that's on the other video, video, sorry, the Black Rocks Leather and Rich, or you could also use a Saddle Butter, there's also another product that's on Amazon that someone else who uses the same kind of technique as me had recommended to me. And from what I can see, the saddle butter works the same as Black Rocks, except it isn't as um, potent as Black Rocks. Black Rocks, leather and rich is the kind of conditioner that really, really hydrates Vachetta leather. It'll bring it back to life. If it's dry and cracked, Black Rocks will bring it back to life. So pretty much I just wanted to explain that because I think that there's this whole misconception where and I see this said a lot in, in you know purse forums Facebook groups and stuff like that people just go ahead and just spray Apple Guard Carbon Pro on their Vachetta to protect the Vachetta but they're not actually assessing when it comes to a pre-loved item has this been treated already before has it continually been treated you are running a risk of going ahead and just treating the bag with that kind of product if it's not brand new anymore. So you really need to do some fine detail assessment. However, if you have bought your bag from the get-go brand new like this one, brand new, then you can proceed to continue to just treat it every six months with the Carbon Pro or the Apple Guard and you should be fine because that will actually also repel dirt, stains and oils from getting into the Vachetta leather. It will still create, it'll still get a patina because the patina can actually come about just from oxygen. It doesn't have to necessarily be oils that create the patina. It's also oxygen from the air that changes the color of leather over, over time and that's what, that's how you'll get that honey color. So for at least probably a good five years, I could still be able to use um, the Carbon Pro to protect this from water stains. After that period of time, I'll have to assess the leather. Even so, I would still assess the leather before going into it after the bag's been used, just to make sure that no oil has gotten in somehow. 
um, no hand oils and that sort of thing. But generally speaking, I should be able to just continue to use the Carbon Pro for the next five years on this handbag, if it's still in my collection, of course, to prevent um, the water stains and the dirt getting into the Vachetta leather, okay? So this video, obviously, if you do choose to follow what I do, you are doing so at your own risk. I can only give you the best advice possible from my personal experience, my experience dealing with leather. I am by no means a leather expert, however I consider myself passionate when it comes to understanding all types of leather. I really invest a lot of my time in researching and understanding because to me luxury is not cheap, it is expensive, it doesn't come easy to just go and buy things without really understanding them. I like to make sure that I can care for my products to the best as possible. That's just how I am. So I feel as though I can give you very sound advice, but as to whether you follow it and do it the exact way that I do, it is still some risk because obviously I'm not you, you're not me, you know, we can't, I can't guarantee that you're going to exactly replicate the way that my technique is. So just be aware you are doing so at your own risk. However, I am confident in my technique overall, if you can follow it to a T. So hopefully I've given some, um, explanation when it comes to treating um, Vachetta leather. I know that there are a lot of YouTube videos when it comes to using the Apple Guard and Carbon Pro and that sort of thing. There are a lot of, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of people that use it on their bags, but I feel what's really lacking is the explanation of how these products sort of work on your bags and if you should be really using them after time has gone on and they've become a pre-loved item. I apologize if the lighting isn't the best, um, I did kind of film this on a whim. I decided I'm just going to film it so you guys can see how I do it. Basically, you just want to cover the monogram canvas with the paper towel as best as possible. The product doesn't damage monogram canvas. However, there is still some risk factor because monogram canvas is not leather and the product is not designed specifically for non-leather goods. It's designed for leather. So just try to um, cover the monogram canvas as best you can. As you will see in my video, I do clean the monogram canvas pretty much immediately after I sprayed with just a water only baby wipe. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you are welcome to ask them down below. And hopefully this video is informative and useful and enjoy watching.
So this is the end result. I have let the bag dry overnight so it has dried for about about eight hours before I filmed this and as you can see it looks fantastic. Perhaps the Vachetta has darkened very slightly, maybe, perhaps. If it has, it is hardly noticeable. What I would suggest is that if you're in a very rain prone area or if you just want to be extra careful, it's a good idea to then repeat this process the next day, let it um, sit for 24 hours and then do the process again. So it's fine for you to do two coats as long as you wait at least 24 hours in between and that way the bag will be nice and repellent from water. So I'm just going to show you how I actually tie a twilly onto the handle to attach a strap in the meantime. The D-rings would be a, a cleaner kind of option, it'll look a little bit more sleek. But if you can't get hold of the D-rings or you don't feel comfortable modifying your handbag, then this is the safest method to go about by just tying a twilly. So I've just kind of halved it, wrapped it around the, put it on the Vachetta handle so it's exactly in half. You can't really see in frame but it is in half. And then we're just going to go ahead and wrap one side of the bag, what, sorry, one side of the handle. And you want to kind of do it as tight as possible. It's a bit hard to sort of wrap it without my hand kind of getting in the way, unfortunately. So hopefully this, you kind of can get the idea of what I'm doing. It's just the same way that you would wrap a twilly on a handle. But when you get to the part where you're stopping at this um, little tab, this leather tab here, this is when you want to prepare the twilly to start tying a knot. So I'm going to go pull this piece up that I just wrapped and tie this through, pull it through. So now I have a knot, actually I'm probably going to go the other way, what I might do, yeah I'm going to go this way, sorry, because that way it will lay flat. You'll see the difference, you might, you might do exactly what I did and realise that you've done it wrong. Yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, it lays flat, I want the knot to be as flat as possible. So yeah, this way made sure that the knot was more flat, the other way it was kind of sticking up. So I still, I want the knot to be flat, but I still want to be able to grab the knot because this is actually going to be where I hook on the strap. But I still have to go ahead and do some more knots to keep it nice and secure, but this is going to be the knot that I most likely use. But I'm going to go ahead and now repeat that. And I'm going to go through, now I've wrapped it back around, and I'm going to go through both of the, like, both of those loops. So I'm going through the original knot, and now the next loop that I've just created, and I'm threading it down, so we are making sure that the twilly, little twilly end is going down. And then I'm going to pull that tight. Pulling it very, very tight. And that should still be the original loop there. And then I'm going to try and go once more and I don't know if I can get underneath both the two knots that I've just created. So I might just go underneath. If you can get underneath all of the knots, that's ideal, but because um, it makes sure that you don't, re like it doesn't start coming undone. But for now, I'm just going to go through the top knot, the one that I'm likely going to hook onto. If I can get it through, it's getting really... Because too, there's too many knots now, but it's good. This is what you want. You want to have, you want to have, the, ideally have three knots because that means that it's going to be your strap when you attach it with the weight of the contents isn't going to come undone. So that's three knots. Now it doesn't look that pretty. I know it doesn't look that pretty, but this will make sure that your strap is nice and secure. Now this should be the original knot that I created. And the reason why I want to go with the original knot is because there's now two knots over the top of that original knot. Like there's two knots after the first knot. So even though they're not actually sitting on top of the original, this original knot still has a lot of basis behind it keeping its strength. So now you can actually go ahead and just attach the strap onto that. See how it's like that? I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other side quickly. Now this, that gold strap, is 110 centimeters because I'm a little bit short. If you are based in Australia, or even if you're based overseas, I ship overseas, I do sell them in my eBay store. If you want to buy them somewhere else, by all means, you're more than welcome to. Sometimes the straps can be pretty poor quality though. This has got a really good solid weight to it. It's actually quite weighty, so it doesn't feel too light. 
Um, yeah, so if you are interested, particularly if you're in Australia, because I do free postage within Australia, I will link my eBay store down below if you want to buy one of those chain straps for your um, bag. So just doing the same process again. This is going to be the first knot. Making sure that's tight and then I'm going to go through again. Go through the, both of the, the whole first knot underneath. I know that it's hard to sort of see because my hand is getting in the way. And then there should still be the first knot on top. I'm going to try and go once more but I don't seem to have as much length left and again I'm going through that top, top first knot okay so that should be the very first knot that I created and then looping the strap on so that is how you can attach a strap to your niece mini even your niece bb if you don't want to use the little rings that it comes with even for any kind of vanity bag that doesn't have any d rings this is how you can actually attach a strap with the twilly so if you have a chanel vanity this is the same um, process that i actually use and yeah it holds really well it can if depending on how tight your knots are how many knots you do will depend on as to whether it loosens over time i have had it loosen over time before because i didn't do the best of the job with the knots but it took like a whole two days of usage for that to happen anyway